My name is Sansara Taylor, and I am a revolutionary. I'm a follower of the revolutionary leader, Bob Avakian, um, who's the architect of the new communism. I am the co-host of the Revolution Nothing Less show on YouTube. And for many years, from that perspective, I have recognized and been fighting that abortion is central to women's lives and whether women will be treated as full human beings or as incubators, as property of men, as subjugated lesser than uh, uh, oppressed status. And so this has been a fight I've been in, um, learned a great deal over oh, since the 90s when the first abortion doctor was assassinated. Um, and we in Rise Up for Abortion Rights unite people from many diverse political and ideological perspectives. That's a great strength of ours, from the initiators to all of you, and that we are united around a central demand, which is what I want to zero in on, which is stop the Supreme Court. Stop the Supreme Court from taking away women's fundamental right to abortion. Forced motherhood is female enslavement, and we need abortion on demand and without apology. And this is profoundly important. Right now, we need to understand that the Supreme Court is on track, as all of you I'm sure know, to decimate the right to abortion, to take it away, to reverse a constitutional right for the first time in US history, a major assault on the masses of people, on the masses of women and girls and on justice overall. This is an atrocity and it must be stopped. It must be stopped because exactly as I said, forcing women to have children against their will is a form of enslavement. Mm -hmm. It shatters lives, it forecloses dreams, it forces women and girls to drop out of school, to lose their jobs, it traps women in abuse, it drives them into poverty, and it tells every woman, every part of society, no matter how much privilege she has, and even worse, if she's trapped at the bottom of society and facing multiple barriers, it tells every woman that they are less than fully human in the eyes of the state, and this is something that must not be allowed to happen. And if this happens, it is not the end, it's the beginning. If they are allowed to overturn Roe v. Wade, they're coming for contraception next. They're not leaving the blue states safe. They are coming for LGBTQ rights. They are coming for the lives of our trans youth. They are coming for interracial marriage. They are accelerating the whole fascist and Christian fascist juggernaut, which has been building and mounting for decades, which is now at the brink of success at the Supreme Court. So we need to draw the line, this must be stopped. And what I wanna focus my remarks on and what we have a mission to accomplish together here today is that this can be stopped. The attack, yes, the Supreme Court is on track to overturn Roe v. Wade. Yes, that hideous manifesto of misogyny and dark ages thought that was called a draft decision from Samuel Alito is atrocious and makes clear they have a majority if we do not change the political calculus in this country. But it is not a done deal. It is not yet the law. And I wanna talk about how we can stop this and what we need to aim, how we need to fight with all we've got to stop it, even in the short time we have. Now, people often say, and I know it's in the chat, and if you can't help yourself and you're gonna keep chatting, and debating this while I speak, I can't stop you, but I would request that you, we put a lot of thought into this. I would request that you pause and listen. And then we engage in a discussion and a debate on the basis of having had a common presentation. I, I'm gonna address something very serious that very few people see the basis for in society, but has implications of the lives of millions and millions of women and girls and justice overall hangs in the balance, which is that we have to fight to stop this decision from becoming law and how we can. And I wanna say this, if we in our millions, in mass, sustained, determined, unrelenting, not just for a day, unrelenting, nonviolent resistance and protest and acts of defiance, if we make clear in word and deed that we will bring the gears of society to a grinding halt before we accept the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We have a shot at stopping this from becoming law. And I don't say this because I'm naive. I don't think we're gonna get inside the hearts and the minds of Clarence Thomas or Samuel Alito or Amy Coney Barrett and win them over. 
I am not naive that they are very powerful. They are very theocratic. They are very dark ages. And yes, they have built their movement up over decades. They have a cadre of millions of foot soldiers who harass and terrorize women outside every clinic, and they've done it for decades. They have taken over state legislatures. They have captured the federal judiciary from the highest level, very significantly on down. I am well aware, and this movement is well aware of the power they have, which is why we have to be determined not to let them get any more power. If they have the force of the state ripping away the legal right to abortion, do not kid yourself that this will be something we can do a work around and just help all the women who need to and other pregnant people who need to travel. You can do that for a while and that is righteous, but it will be on shrinking ground and the fascists will be on the march, which they have been. We have to draw a line and fight to stop it now. It is far harder to win a right back after it has been lost than to save it and defend it while you have it. So I want you to imagine, and these are reality-based imaginations. I want you to imagine the tens of thousands of predominantly furious Heartsick women who came flooding into the streets, but also men, yes, people of different genders, people who came out into the streets after that draft decision was leaked with tears in their eyes and rage in their heart and terror and fear in their bellies who came out and said, no, I want you to imagine all those people coming back into the streets, not for one day, and then going home and saying, oh, we vented our frustration, coming back and saying no again and again. I want you to imagine. All the 10,000 or so who marched with Rise Up for Abortion Rights and inserted into those protests and the ones that we led, not just outrage, but the demand stopped the Supreme Court from overturning Roe. Overturn Roe, hell no. All of them and all the thousands, beautiful, young, righteous, thousands of young students, college students, high school students, middle school students who answered the call we put out to walk out of school and shut down their campuses and grind up and gum up business as usual. Hundreds and hundreds of students walking out from schools all across this country. Yes, in New York and California righteously, but also in Arkansas, Connecticut, Colorado, Texas, all over big towns, small towns, red, blue, young people who are saying, we will not let you steal our futures. Imagine them coming back and not just sustaining in small numbers of determined youth, but winning, hold their the entire schools to walk out, entire campuses, and then also going to other sections of society, these young people, not just coming back themselves, but marching to the hospitals at shift change and cha challenging the nurses and the doctors and the healthcare workers to join us in wearing green and standing up and gumming up the workings of society. Imagine what marching to Broadway when the plays are, when audiences are lining up or the plays are letting out and challenging and struggling with the actors and the audiences to join us. Imagine this spreading. Imagine all the women, the one in four women who's gotten an abortion in her life being aroused to join us in the streets. Imagine if we were going and challenging our beloved artists and public intellectuals and the conscience of society, the voices who carry the conscience of society to stand with us, and they were. And not just voicing their outrage, as important and as righteous as that is, but joining in, joining in saying this must stop wearing the green bandana together with us, the symbol, the very powerful symbol that came out of Argentina, came out of Argentina, where women there went in the streets and did what everybody said was impossible. They went in the streets with fury. They didn't have anybody backing them up and they kept coming back. They kept coming back and they refused to stop and they struggled with people to wake up. And they decriminalized abortion in a very profoundly Catholic, patriarchal, highly repressive society. They tore down those anti-abortion laws and they inspired the women of Colombia, who then took up the green bandana, went in the streets, and they decriminalized abortion there just this February. This movement, this green wave, this symbol, imagine this being taken up on the stages from, our, from the biggest musicians to the smallest clubs, from all different sections of society showing where they stand. Musicians, actors, performers of all kinds. I want you to imagine this green spreading, being a symbol that 
not just tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, but literally millions of people in this country who hate what's coming, who fear what's coming, who are afraid to look at it because they don't see a way to fight it. Imagine they start seeing this green everywhere and start wearing it themselves. And you start to see, my God, we are legions. There are so many of us. It starts to embolden more action, civil disobedience, nonviolence, athletes speaking out and wearing the green on the court or on the field. Imagine this taking hold and again and again and again and relentlessly. So unignorable, so visible, so powerful and righteous that it can be seen all over the world. We have the power to create a political situation, not where we win over the fascists on the court, but where, we, where they have to recognize and even the fascists worry about things like this. They have to recognize that if they go forward with taking this right away in the face of that mass opposition, they will lose any shred of legitimacy for their institutions and their system in the eyes of millions and millions around this country and billions around the world. That is what could force them to recalculate and we have that power. We have that power. That is the power of the people. They are powerful but they are not all powerful and they are not gods. They might wish they are, they might claim they're on a mission from God, but they are not gods. We have power too, but we are sleeping on our power. Our side is sleeping on its power. And we here today have to dare in a way that most people right now are not ready to and willing to, but we are going to struggle with them too. We need to dare, we need to think big, and we need to dare to bring alive their worst nightmare, which is an inflamed, righteous, uprising, furious, relentless, truth-telling, nonviolent, massive, sustained struggle that says no way. And another key ingredient I want us to take stock in that we have on our side, that they can never have, what we have on our side, and we have seen it, and it has been so beautiful and so inspiring. It's still microcosm, but we need to scale it up. We have seen the power of the fury, the righteous fury of women and girls rising up at this violence inflicted on them, threatened against them by the state, and rising up and uncorking what has been a suppressed burning rage simmering in inside the hearts and the minds of generations of women and girls over centuries, over millennia, at the way they've been treated as less than, treated as punching bags, treated as baby making machines, treated as sex objects, treated as things to be pimped out, beaten down, disrespected, discounted. And this fury that has come out and we've seen it and the young people have talked about it, how righteous, how enlivening it is to be out there and have a place to put their fury and it's infectious. And many of you watching know what I'm talking about because that's why you are here. Because you have felt this fury and you have found a place for it. And this is a force that can wake up millions. There is a fury seething in the hearts of millions and millions of women and girls that we need to call forward with our daring, with our clarity. And we need to call that forward from everybody who loves justice. And that's a strength on our side that they fear and we must not underestimate. So I am here to say, and we are here to work on together. We are on a mission to stop them from going forward. And if we do this, if we bring alive this vision that I'm talking about, which is very realizable because most people don't wanna see this happen. We've all read the polls. We all know this. Most people don't want women forced to have children against their will. Most people know that's barbaric, a 12 year old raped by her uncle and forced by the state to have a child against their will. Most people know that's wrong. We can wake them up and move them to act. That is what we have the power to do, okay? And that's our mission. And if we do that, we could back them up. And if we fail to back them up, but we have brought forward this kind of struggle, we will be in a stronger position to fight forward if they go ahead and take away Roe v. Wade and take away abortion rights. Because if you have an aroused and inflamed, a righteously standing up people and they are punched in the nose by an illegitimate fascist assault on the lives of, and bodies and very humanity of half of society, then that is seen as illegitimate and it can inspire greater struggle and resistance. But if you lie down and let them take this without a fight, it will lead to greater demoralization and defeat. 
And we are gonna have a fight on our hands either way. So the sooner we get started, the sooner we raise our sights and the more daring we are, the stronger position we're going to be in. A chance to defeat this and the strongest position if we don't. So, and that includes fighting to reverse it. And it includes having a bigger C of people who will help the women and others who need abortions to access them. But the key thing right now is this political battle, this fight, and not to give up without a fight, not to say it's over before it's over. Don't let them count us out. So on that basis, I wanna stress there are two shifts, two changes in our attitude, ourselves, each of us tuned in today, each of you watching, and that we have to undergo and we have to lead legions to undergo. And the first is the shift from, I hate what this court is doing. It's barbaric what this court is doing. Oh my God, I wish somebody would do something about this. I can't believe this is happening. The shift from hating it or fearing it to saying, we are going to fight to stop it. We're the ones. The shift from being a bystander in history, a bystander in a crime against humanity that's about to go down and being active participants willing to be the force that gets in the way and deflects the future onto a different path. We have to get out of the passive seat. I hate this to we will dare. We got to get from how dare they to we will dare. That's number one. And number two, we have to go further than that even. From we are willing to fight this, we are willing to fight to stop it, to we are going to call on and struggle with others. And we are going to call on others to call on others, to, the, to use their platforms, their influence, their finances, their resources, their skills, their networks, their notoriety where applicable, to call others into the fight to stop this. And that is the struggle we have to undergo. We are the ones who are gonna wage that struggle. Rise Up for Abortion Rights.org invites everybody in. But this is the mission that was not being taken up, which is why we started. There was a lot of people preparing for post row. There was a lot of people who didn't know this assault was going on. We said we are gonna stand in the breach and lead a fight to stop this. And there are the forces who could be one to it, but we have to dare to rally them. So that's our mission, that's our orientation. With that in mind, we have a big vision and all of you are part of wrangling with the vision. And when we get into the breakouts in just a few minutes, you're gonna be part of developing this vision. But I wanna give a few elements. A bunch of us, the leaders in this movement have spent the last, I mean, the last 24 hours nonstop strategizing and coming up with this and, and the last several weeks kind of trying to develop our next steps. And so here's what we are going to um, uh, organize our breakouts around and you'll hear more about them right before we break out. But one, we wanna build on these walkouts that have happened every Thursday. They are so inspiring. Some of you may know about them, some of you may not. They haven't broken into all the media, but they've been very powerful and they have gotten a lot of media. Students have been walking out across this country, mainly high school, but also other ages, every Thursday and others have joined them. And there's been marches this last Thursday. The march took over the Brooklyn Bridge here in New York. It was glorious, it was righteous, no business as usual. But there's also been a challenge. We're getting towards the end of the year. It's coming into finals. It's hard to keep walking out every week. There's smaller numbers. So we wanna shift this from walking out and converging to every school really fighting for school-wide green out and walk out for 19 minutes and 73 seconds, where you get everybody, not all day, but 19 minutes, 73 seconds in front of the school at the flagpole, maybe you raise a green flag or something else, body paint, green up, you walk out, 1973 is the year of Roe v. Wade. And, the, and what we wanna say is for 19 minutes and 73 seconds, stop everything to save Roe. And it's a glimmer of stopping all of society to save Roe, but it's building up our muscles and setting an example. So we wanna do this so that it spreads and takes hold and draw, as opposed to winnowing each week, we want it to spread school-wide, institution-wide for a shorter period of time. Um, and we also wanna have this happen in, among the professions and other sections of society. You know, uh, hospital workers, 19 minutes, 73 seconds. Other people who drive buses, maybe they stop for 19 minutes, 73 seconds. Yes, it is 20 minutes and 13 seconds. I see that in the chat, but the poetry of it is 1973 for Roe v. Wade and people can grasp that. 
um, but it's bringing society to a halt for 19 minutes and 73 seconds to stop everything to save Roe. And it's the specter of stopping everything. You're doing it for 19 minutes, 73, but you're building up your muscles to do, to do more. So we're gonna have a breakout that goes into this, this, the walkouts on the campuses and green graduations, where this really is the symbol of a generation. What is our future? We're, you're saying we just graduated, the future is ours. Well, what future do we have? What's it gonna count for? We want these graduations green. So there'll be breakouts with the students and youth, and there'll be a breakout for everybody of every other age, professions and others who wanna grapple with how to do shutdowns for 19 minutes, 73 seconds with medical professionals, with hospital workers, with stage hands, with bus drivers, with other sections of people. Two, we want, and we had last weekend in some other places to, in New York and some other places, these really powerful young people who, who got together like 30 of them and just stormed all over New York City in bloody pants, green bandanas and they bull horns and they challenged everybody everywhere they went to join the shutdown. We want to scale that up and do a weekend of green out. Or it's get out and green up. You, where you go out everywhere, Friday night at five o'clock, you gather and you do a green parade through the nightlife district, through the bars, the nightlife, the, the outdoor dining, and you're spreading the green, you're chanting, you're drawing people in, you're getting them to spread it on their social media. You're taking this into people's lives on Friday night, Saturday, to the museums, to public gatherings, to busy parks. There's gonna be a workshop, a breakout that, that wrestles with this and makes plans for this. Really think big and wild and creative and infectious to spread the green, this symbol. And part of that workshop breakout is also going to include if there are people who want to do actions at the some of the very, we wanna invite the progressive churches, mosques and synagogues to take up the green from the pulpit, but also outside to go to some of these theocratic Christian fascist churches that have been behind this assault and have protests in the green outside those churches. And in some places they may be women in bloody pants with their bare chest painted green and let the church deal with the female body with defiance. There's all kinds of ideas. So there's, that's the second workshop is the green out weekend, just all kinds of wild ideas. Third, we want on Monday and that we've been getting requests for um, civil disobedience, nonviolent, and people saying, isn't it time to shut it down? Isn't it time to put it on the line? And absolutely. There's many forms that people need to take, but that is one of them. So we want a workshop, a breakout to get into the, those plans, which include the theme we're proposing, but you guys will enrich it in the breakout, is um, overturn row over our dead bodies, die-ins, disruptive die-ins. And these could be you know, five youth, they could be 500 people. They could be in a shopping mall that gums up Macy's for, 20 minutes or 10 minutes until you get kicked out, or they could be a thousand people who go down to a major bridge or tunnel and lie down and say, overturn row over our dead bodies. Disruptive die-ins in creative ways all over society with different levels of risk that you wanna take, but that's a way to gum up business as usual. So these are the three kind of broad uh, workshops that we wanna invite people into to take the, the vision, the mission of stopping them from overturning row into society, into practice. Um, the very last thing, or two last things I wanna say, and this is laying out the whole, what we're gonna work on. Um, we are not gonna do a breakout on this, but we are going to announce all over the country. Um, and if you're in an area where there's not a chapter and you wanna take responsibility for hosting this and anchoring this, you should write to us and let us know. We'll put it on the website. We are gonna do day of decisions Day of the Supreme Court decision, convergences, protests, walkouts, rally on the spot, leave wherever you are and go into the streets and raise hell and day after. We're not gonna take the time as a breakout. It's a fairly simple concept, but we wanna announce that now. We're gonna put that on the map. We'll have convergences in every city because however this decision comes down, we have to mark it with defiance and we have to prepare ourselves for the fight ahead. If we back them up, we're gonna celebrate like crazy and the fascists are gonna be pissed off and we'll have a fight still on our hands. If we get a defeat in this round, we're gonna have a bigger fight on our hands. We have to be in the streets and galvanize. So we're gonna do that. And the final point of orientation um, is that I was speaking to somebody and I think this typifies a lot. So I wanna share it here. I was speaking to somebody with a great deal of influence. And I said to them, 
Uh, you could be a game changer in this if you threw in more fully. And they said, well, how could I be a game changer? Why would the politicians listen to me any more than anybody else? And this to me concentrated that we have to stop thinking about looking up and hoping that we could get somebody to listen and help us. We are not looking up to those in power who have failed us. We are looking out at the millions and millions who don't want this to happen and we are going to activate them. That's why we're doing green out. That's why we're spreading the green. That's why we're trying to deepen this into all the campuses and to the workplaces. And that's why we are envisioning things. Every action we take, every message we put is stop the Supreme Court from taking away abortion rights, forced motherhood as female enslavement, abortion on demand and without apology and into the streets and rise up for abortion rights, all hands on deck. Everybody has a role to play. We're out there to recruit and to lead people to act.